Morning peeps, good morning everyone. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. All right, let's jump straight to the big news. Uh, we all kind of knew this was going to happen. I think Mike Coppinger put it out a couple of weeks ago that Canelo was going to fight Edgar Belanga. I actually spoke to Belanga. Um, he was there for the Canelo Munguia fight and he seemed to know back then that he was in line to fight Canelo, providing obviously that Munguia didn't cause the upset. Uh, there was a lot of talk recently about Chris Eubank Jr., but it is now official. I think the date is September 14th. Canelo will fight Edgar Belanga. I don't think it's for undisputed. I think Canelo will vacate or be stripped of his IBF super middleweight title. But Canelo's next opponent is Edgar Belanga, uh, unbeaten Puerto Rican. Look, I'm not going to... I understand why some fight fans will be upset that it's Belanga. But this isn't Belanga's fault, right? Any super middleweight or even middleweight should put their hands up to fight Canelo. It's a life-changing opportunity. I mean, you score a home run and, I mean, anything can happen next. It's going to be a career-high payday for whoever fights him. And you, why would you not want to fight Canelo, right? So you put your hand up to fight. Your team will then try and get the fight. Eddie Hearn has delivered. This isn't anything um, against Edgar Belanga. Do I think Edgar Belanga's ready for Canelo? No, I, I certainly don't. Uh, I think Canelo will beat Edgar Belanga. But you can't blame Belanga for saying, I want the fight, give me the fight. And now he's got the fight. This is a Team Canelo uh, issue here. If you're going to be upset with the matchmaking, focus all your energy towards Canelo. Look, guys, Canelo just isn't going to fight a top 168 pound guy anymore. That's just fact, right? I mean, I am very much a case of what have you done for me lately? And I think Canelo's shown in the last three years that he just isn't going to fight the next man up. It just isn't going to happen. Canelo hasn't fought a top 168 pound guy since Caleb Plant 2021. When was that? September 2021? That's the last time he fought a top 168 pound guy. Mingia wasn't a top 168 pound guy. He wasn't. I think Mingia is a good fighter. I think Mingia proved that night that he's a legit 168 pound guy. But going into that fight, Mingia had only been at 168 pounds for a year. And had only fought Derivanchenko, who gave him all sorts of problems, and he looked good against John Ryder. That's not a top 168 pound guy. He fought Jamel Charlo coming up from 154 to 168. That's not a top 168 pound guy. He fought John Ryder. Like, I like John, but John wouldn't be considered a top. You know, that's not what I'm talking about, a top 168 pound guy. Before that, he fought Golovkin. Massive Golovkin fan. That was Golovkin's first fight, I believe, at 168 pounds. Golovkin right at the end. Golovkin is not a top 168 pound guy. And before that was Dimitri Bivol. He hasn't fought a top 168 pound guy, guys, for three years. He ain't going to start doing it now. It's just that simple. He ain't going to start doing it now. I think the Bivol fight took something out of him. Maybe not physically, although, look, Canelo's not physically the guy he was a few years ago, and you're not going to be. When you've had a long career like Canelo and you've been in some really tough fights, it's going to take something out of you. Age is obviously a big factor as well. He's only 34, but it's been a long, long career. I think that Bivol fight took something out of him mentally. Like He went into that Bivol fight as a big favorite. Although you guys know I stuck with Team Bivol, but he went into that Bivol fight as a big favorite. And I think he was surprised um, that he either lost a step or he isn't this invincible killer that he was in the lead up to that fight. I remember, and I've got a good memory for these things. You guys can Google it if you don't believe me. I remember there was some crazy talk about, and this is before the Bivol fight, by the way. There was some crazy talk about Canelo fighting Usyk at a catchweight. That's how high they had Canelo. That, that's what Canelo was. Canelo lost the Bivol fight and he's just dipped down in terms of level since then. So I think mentally, I think his team, look, his team is smart, right? I mean, this is a case of risk reward, mate. The highest reward for, I wouldn't say the lowest risk. Like even the fighters I just mentioned, these are not bums. I mean, Mingir is not a bum, nor is Charlo, nor is Golovkin, nor is John Ryder. But again, these are not the elite guys in the division. So it's a case of risk reward. He's still going to get paid the same amount of money. Like Canelo is still that guy. He's got his guaranteed number. That guaranteed number is still going to be big regardless of, of who he fights. Obviously, the pay-per-view money will take a bit of a hit because people aren't that invested in it, but he's still going to get his money. So why fight the killers? Why fight them? 
Why fight the killers when you're going to get paid? Why fight? Like, I would rather him, obviously, like you guys, would rather see him fight Benavides. I'd rather see him fight David Morrell. Why fight those killers when we're going to pay you the same money? It's not like Canelo's fucking being chased by the bailiffs. We're going to pay you the same money to fight an Edgar Belanga. I mean, we want it as fans, but unfortunately, um, our voices aren't listened to uh, right now. So yeah, that's the situation uh, with Canelo. I've now accepted it. I've now accepted that he ain't going to fight the next man up. He's going to fight who he wants to fight. And up next, if he gets past Belanga, probably going to be Terence Crawford. I mean, I, I love T-Bud and I think T-Bud can cause him problems. I think T-Bud could potentially beat him. But again, T-Bud is not the next man up. It isn't that. And this kind of makes me respect even more those guys that are no longer at the peak of their powers, those guys that are on the way out, but fuck it, will still fight anybody. Like the, there are fighters in the last 10, 15 years, next man up regardless. I'm talking sort of A-side big name fighters. Manny Pacquiao springs to mind. Manny Pacquiao coming towards the end would fight fucking anybody. He does it like who? Who's up next? There, there was no question of mm, next. Look at his record. And I'm talking right towards the end. Like, this is the key point I'm trying to make. Because Canelo is coming at the end, right? Right towards the end, look at who Manny Pacquiao fought. Killers. Right at the end. Ugas, Furman. Right? This, is, this is right at the end, by the way. You know, Bernard Hopkins springs to mind as well. At the end, look who he's fighting. Ridiculous. Um, some fighters just don't do it. Floyd didn't do it. Floyd, towards the end, gave us... Obviously, Manny Pacquiao was coming towards the end. Manny Pacquiao was no longer Manny Pacquiao. He gave us Andre Berto. He gave us Robert Guerrero. He gave us Victor Ortiz. I mean, Marcus Maidana caused him a big problem, but Marcus Maidana was never the next man up. If you guys remember, the next man up at the time, I think, was Amir Khan. So, look, all fighters do it. So, this is why this is no slight on Canelo. It's just we as fight fans accepting that this is what he's doing. Again, go and look at his most recent fights at 168 pounds. I mean, Belanga will be it, Mungia, John Ryder, Jamel Charlo, Golovkin. None of those were ever the next man up. I think John could have been mandatory. So let's give John some credit and John put up a good fight. But that Bivol fight mentally, I think, took something out of him. And I think his team were like, oh, OK, cool. We need to maybe have a look at what we're doing here. Maybe. I, I, that's what I personally think. But look, um, it's been announced. It's going to happen. The uh, I think co-main event is uh, Erislandi Lara versus Danny Garcia. What? <laughs> like, when was the last time Danny fought? Fucking, okay, let's have a quick look. Like, neither of those guys are middleweights either. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Like, Hamza Shiraz will beat both of those guys right now. Easy. I'm, I'm being easy. Uh, Danny Garcia's last fight was against um, Jose Benavidez Jr., that was the 30th of July, 2022. He's walking straight into a world title fight. Before that, he fought Errol Spence. Uh, that was two years before that. Walking straight into a world title fight. Boxing. Boxing. On Errol Spence, um, I think you guys have probably seen the news that Errol Spence's fight against Sebastian Fendora has been... Uh, well, there's there's a, um, an argument whether it's been delayed or been cancelled. Um, some people are reporting that it's been cancelled and it isn't happening. Um, I think Sebastian Fendora put on his Instagram post that it's actually been delayed and it's going to be rescheduled. I don't think that fight's happening. I am now... I'm now in the camp that we might not see Errol Spence again. I'm starting to kind of go that way. Like Errol Spence hasn't fought. Look, we could in a couple of years, almost a bit like Danny Garcia where he just pops up and he gets a fight. But um, Errol Spence hasn't fought since Crawford and... Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, I will say this very quickly on Canelo. Um, just because I, I, you know, spoke about Danny having fought for a couple of years. Even Crawford, I mean, he hasn't fought since Errol. Errol's not fought. Canelo, regardless of whether or not we like the opponent choice, this fucker gives you two fights a year, guaranteed. Gives you doesn't have to. By the way, Canelo is you know Canelo must Canelo must have half a billion in the bank. Canelo must be that, like you think of the fights Canelo's had and how long he's been doing at top level and he's been getting 25, 30, 40, 50 mil for a long time. He must have half a billion in the bank. This motherfucker's desire to still want to give us two fights a year is insane. Doesn't have to do it. Could sleep, chill, wake up, do nothing. But he's still saying, you know what? No, I want to fight. 
Yeah, maybe it's not the best. Maybe he's not given us the greatest of opponents, right? Yes, we want Benavides. We want this. We want that. But at least he's fighting. Look at some of these other cats. What are they doing? What are they doing? You know what I mean? So he's almost got a right to say, oh, fuck it. Oh, you know, at least I'm fighting. Give me him. I don't like it personally. I still want to see him because I still think there is something there. I want to still want to see him against the best, but at least he is fighting. Um, uh, Natasha Jonas respects Clarissa Shields' ambition, but says there's nobody left for her to fight. Yeah, it's true. I I I, I agree, and I, I feel sorry for Clarissa. Um, and I, I I think boxer missed a step. I think boxer sort of immediately. Maybe not immediately, but they should have made the Savannah Marshall rematch. That fight was actually competitive to the point where you could have done it again. And those girls, the, the, in the immediate aftermath, there was a level of respect. There was also disrespect immediately as well. You could have sold it, could have done it again. Now you look around and there's there's no one. Um, there was a lot of talk for a while about Shadisha Green, um, but then she lost. And even she, she fought recently and got put down. She, she won, but... That ain't there either. There's no one for her to fight. There's no one. Unless she tries to kill herself and boils down to a weight which is just uncomfortable. There's no one. I mean, even she was trying to see if there was anything in that Alicia Baumgardner fight, but they're just, the 20 pounds apart just isn't, um, isn't going to happen. Um, let's have a look if there is anything else. Um, there is a lot of talk here as well, which is very interesting about Canelo and that date that he's going to fight. Obviously, look, Mexican, Puerto Rican should do numbers. Um, but the UFC are in town. The UFC are in town. So they're going to have to promote the fuck out of this. Um, I mean, really, really go for it. Because, pff, like, you're going to need to... That We almost... I don't know, man. Like, like, like 24 sevens really kind of... But I almost feel like we haven't seen anything like that for ages. I know Showtime, look, Showtime did a good job. I know DAZN are trying the hardest as well to kind of give you behind the scenes stuff. But I don't think we've had a good 24-7 since HBO did them. Like Floyd's 24-7s were fantastic because you found out a bit more. Even those fights like Robert Guerrero one, for example, you go, you found out a bit more about Guerrero. That they're going to need to really sell Edgar Balanga. Like sell it, sell it. Pfft, don't think they can. And how much more can you sell Canelo? We know him. We know everything about Canelo. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be difficult going head to head. Um, is difficult. The UFC. Uh, Joe Joyce backs Derek Chisora. Sorry, Joe Joyce backs Derek Chisora's desire to keep fighting. Mm. Yeah, I saw um, Chisora put um, uh, a clip on his Twitter page of some of these like crazy antics um, at face-offs and weigh-ins and press conferences. He's been incredible for British boxing. Like incredible. Like, I don't know if British boxing has a British boxing hall of fame. I don't know. Probably does. I'm not sure. Um, but he should be in it. Regardless of the losses, he's been sensational. There's been so many uh, incidents with him that have just sort of got us engaged, got us excited. Like no, not just, I think people would always point to Dillian White and that's the that's probably the best one. But David Hay, that was crazy. Like that David Hay incident in Germany, sort of um, post Chisora Klitschko was fantastic. And then they fight Optum Park and there's a fucking cage between them at the weigh-in. And then obviously he has the Chisora, sorry, the Dillian White stuff. Mate, I think he's been, he's been sensational. But, Age, age, wars, sparring, takes it out of you, man. I, I want this to be his last fight. I want this to be his last fight. Um, all right, anything else or is that it? Guys, I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, I do go to LA, as you guys know, on Sunday. I am going to try my hardest and do like um, sort of day in the life videos in LA. Um, I haven't yet got a um, video guy out there, to be honest with you. Um, but hopefully, you know, I can put it out on the social media. Um, a few people know I'm coming to LA and I'm doing some stuff away from boxing. So hopefully I can find someone to film um, some good content because um, I think it's going to be uh, an exciting week. Um, looking forward to it. Really, I'm really looking forward to Ruiz, Jarrell Miller. That one's going to be interesting. All right, guys, girls, peace and love.